All right. You are listening to uh, the Organization of Transparency and Merit. My name's Joe. And my name is Brian. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to go in, or I was going to go into the problem with California Trump supporters. And uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of add out there that, uh, and uh, this is our second try because. Uh, Basically, the um, the audio was not uh, not coming in as well as we thought. So we had mono, not stereo. Oops. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, you know, uh, on Sunday, uh, I went to a person who is a uh, you know who's a, a very enthusiastic Trump supporter, and uh, I went to a restaurant, and the individual uh, it didn't last that long. I was able to introduce myself to a few of the people. Uh, and uh, one of the things that had happened was there were, he was being protested. I don't know if he was really being protested, but there were other Trump supporters that this gentleman did not like. One of them uh, has said some very disparaging, you know, not good things uh, about, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say about the Jewish community, but he has said, Hitler did nothing wrong, and he has views that uh, are, uh, you know, are not not that good. And then there were also, uh, I don't know if they were with La Raza or Antifa, or both La Raza and Antifa, but they seem to be a large group of Latinos uh, that were protesting uh, the Trump supporters, and they were mainly dealing with the Trump supporters that were outside uh, of the restaurant. And the police were all there. They were basically, uh, you know, had bar- you know they, they had basically separated themselves off between the uh, Trump supporters and the, uh, the Antifa group. One of the things that I found there was that there was uh, a lot of poverty uh, on both ends, and I, you know, like I said, I could be wrong. There could be How some wealthy. How did you figure this out, though? What, was it just by ob- uh, observing the, the, the people around? The car, you? The, the cars that they were driving seemed to be that, you know, and okay. like I said, okay, you know, that they could be just very frugal people. But both on both ends, the anti-Trump and the Trump supporters seem to not be that well off. And I'm not, you know, I'm not claiming I'm better than anybody else, um, but uh, they did seem to not be in the best economic situation. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to that, and there's a lot of reason why Trump supporters have kind of gravitated or, or, or why you know, so-called white racists. And I believe that anybody can be a racist, whether they're, no matter what the, their race is. And the, the people that were protesting the Trump supporters were, were, were Latino, primarily Latino racists themselves. And they were both doing themselves, in my opinion, kind of a disservice. It was, it was they're not, they're not helping. They're, they're not necessarily helping the cause. Uh, whether 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 their cause is for Trump or whether they are anti-Trump, they're not helping their cause. Uh, one of them was waving a Mexican flag, and if you're asking for rights in another country and you're waving the flag, I mean, if you're asking for rights in this country and you're waving the flag of another, that's not that's not really a good move. Um, you're only doing that for your ego. And um, like I said, uh, both, I think, both groups to a degree don't necessarily help the cause. Whether, you know, the, the, the conservative group or the pro-Trump group doesn't help the cause, and the anti-Trump group does not help the cause. They're both there uh, basically for... Uh, bravado points, um, and I and, and I know we talked about this on the on the show we did before, mm-hmm. but I was listening to Larry Elder, 
and he had a episode. He was talking about the Central Park Five and the fact that Ken Burns's documentary leaves things out. I've only seen bits and pieces of that. I think I'm going to watch a bit more of it, but I want to watch and, and, and try to read what they have left out. Um, and this is part of the, the civil rights industrial complex coming in and basically uh, putting forth a narrative. And anybody who chooses to have a different narrative is going to get cut off. Now, there may be more than one story, but these guys were found guilty. They did confess. And a lot of people think that that they were charged with rape. Uh, they were not. They were charged with assault. And I've heard also that there was physical evidence. And also, if you view the tapes of the confessions, you get a very different story than what the mainstream uh, media has been putting out there. Now, Joe and I have been dealing with this for years uh, about, you know, how the media lies, and we've been we've been we've been talking for years with, you know, Colin Flaherty over the years. We've done we've only done two shows, but I've tweeted to him a bit, and I've, I've listened to quite a bit of his podcast, and uh, you know, read snippets of his books and stuff. And uh, you know, like I said, the mainstream media not only covers it, not only doesn't cover it but also fights to suppress it. And I would call it the civil rights industrial complex fights to suppress the truth. And there is, there is a fight between those who believe the lie and those who see through it. And, uh, you know, and, and why, and, and there are also people who kind of know that it's a lie, but they're protecting it because they are afraid on how the right is going to respond. And, you know, who knows whether their fears are legitimate or not, but they are protecting the lie. There is powerful people that are protecting uh, lies. And I don't think, I think there are people who know better who are protecting lies. And uh, I want to, you know, I, I'll get into how to best fight from my perspective on how to fight these lies uh, because we are up against it, but we have the power of truth and they have, they have a lot of power on their end. Uh, so we have to be very careful on how we approach this situation. Joe, do you have anything to add? Well, the, the, the quote is often credited to Napoleon um, <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte, but it's been said that history is a set of lies agreed upon. And if that's the case, uh, I, it's my hope that Transparency and Merit uh, is a um, organization that can help people get to uh, the heart of the matter and maybe see things in a way they hadn't seen before or only seen through uh, the lens of the media so um, or mainstream media. So maybe we can help uh, bridge a gap, uh, bridge the gap between what may have actually happened and what we uh, perceive to have happened. That's just my hopes that hopefully we can uh, get on a few of these stories and, uh, and build some community. We do have a website. Um, it's uh, transparencyandmerit.com. It's the uh, and so come join us and anytime you'd like and definitely if you're on YouTube, hit like and subscribe. We could use that. We're we're just getting we're kickstarting this YouTube page, and uh, and please leave comments. Yeah, yeah if we're wrong, we want to know yeah. it. So yeah. or if you disagree or agree with us, let yeah. us know. And the way you prove us wrong is with logic and reason and the truth. Uh, we don't, we don't, you know, I, I would say for both of us, I don't, I don't think we respond to emotion or, um, you know, and if we don't know something, we'll be honest and we'll re-examine our facts. 
But these are the facts that uh, we're looking at right now. And with that being said, Joe, I think uh, I think that'll end it for me. Is yes. there anything else you want to add? That is it. Thank you. And join us again, uh, the Organization of Transparency and Merit here on Spreaker. And um, we'll, we'll be doing more podcasts over time. So, so like us, subscribe. That's it. All right.